Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, and today I'm going to show you how to use the SCRCPY program to control and share your Android device. Whether that be a tablet, a phone, or anything running the Android operating system, maybe even an Android TV would work with this. As long as it supports USB debugging, then you can do it. If you don't know what USB debugging means, we'll get into that in a bit. After an entire year of playing around with this program, I hadn't even tried pronouncing it without saying each individual letter like SCRCPY. It was just a few days ago when I looked it up, and apparently the Google pronunciation service knows how to say it. Screen copy. So apparently you're supposed to say it like screen copy, which makes sense because it copies the screen of the device. So before we get into this, what is screen copy? Screen copy is a completely free and open source screen mirroring app that allows control of an Android device from a computer. If you don't know what open source means, it essentially means that the code for the application is made public so other people can find bugs and change pieces of code to make the app run smoother. And if the developer likes those changes, they can get added into the official release. That's why all the Linux operating systems are virus repellent, reliable, and extremely fast. Also, if something's open source, it means that you can trust it to not have any spyware or anything like that. Anyway though, screen copy is supported on Linux, macOS, and Windows, so pretty much everyone has access to this amazing program as long as they have a computer. In this video, I'll show you how to install it on both Linux and macOS. But that's just for installing. If you want to know how to use it, and you already have it installed on Windows, you can skip to the last section of the video where I show you how to use it, because it's the same across all operating systems. Something else to note about screen copy is that it is not an Android emulator and does not make a copy of Android or anything like that. In a nutshell, I guess you could say that it duplicates the screen of your computer so that you can control it from there. Another useful feature that I like about this app is that you can simply drag and drop an APK file from your computer to the phone, and it'll install the APK file. If you don't know what an APK file is, it's basically an app file that installs an app that isn't in a default store like the Google Play Store or the Galaxy Store. Another thing I really like about screen copy is that it can record the Android device's screen, and this is extremely useful because of the fact that it doesn't use any of the phone's resources to record the screen. So people with slower phones that install screen recording apps and try to record will notice that when they record, the phone gets laggy. So the screen copy fixes all that, and instead of using up the Android's resources, it records it from your computer. But before you do anything with screen copy, you'll have to head down into your phone settings and enable developer options. Scroll down to about phone, click software information, and press build number until it enables the developer options. I already have it enabled on this phone. Once it's enabled, it appears at the bottom of the settings app. If you're hesitant to enable developer options, know that it is completely safe to do as long as you don't go and mess with all the settings in there. All we're going to do today is turn on USB debugging, which is also completely safe to do. USB debugging allows you to debug over USB, so it allows you to do exactly what screen copy does. The instructions to enable developer options can differ depending on the device you have. So these directions that I showed you will work on Android phones, but they may not work on certain kinds of Android tablets, like maybe Amazon Fire tablets or certain kinds of Android TVs and stuff like that. For this tutorial, you will also need a USB cable that connects to your phone to your computer. Um, if you don't have that, then you can't really do this unless you get an adapter or something. Once you've done all that, you're good to go and you can install screen copy on your computer. So first, I'll show you how to install it on a Mac. The timestamps are in the description, so you can jump right ahead to the Linux section if you want. And after the Linux section, I'll go over how to actually use the program and all of its different features. Before we continue though, if you're liking this content, please click the subscribe button so I stay motivated to make videos like this. Alright, let's jump on to our Mac. So the first step is to open the terminal. So open Spotlight, press Command Space, or press the little magnifying glass up at the top. Now type terminal and you'll get this. So some people shy away from running commands in the terminal, but I'll go through this step by step for the people who have no command line experience. First, we have to install Homebrew, which is a package manager that simplifies the installation of command line utilities. A lot of people will have it installed already, but I'll still put the command down in the description in case some computers don't come with it installed. You will have to enter your password during this process. A bunch of messages will appear in the terminal window, and you don't have to worry about them, unless for some reason it ends in an error. Make sure you wait for the command to finish before you continue typing other commands in the tutorial. It'll take about 5 to 10 minutes to complete, and once the prompt is back, you can continue. So next we have to install Android Platform Tools. We're going to use the brew command, which is what we just installed. You used to be able to type brew cask install android platform tools, but nowadays we have to type brew install dash dash cask android platform tools. This will install the ADB tools. ADB stands for Android Debug Bridge, and this installation can also take a few minutes. 
Lastly, we have to install screen copy by typing brew install screen copy. Now we're done installing things and it's time to start actually using it. So if you haven't enabled USB debugging on your Android device yet, now is the time to do it since this will not work if you don't have it enabled. So now you have to plug in your Android device using a USB cable. I recommend using a USB-C to USB-C cable since most MacBooks only have USB-C ports, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get your device connected, whether that be using an adapter or something like that. My phone came with the perfect type of cable, so I'll be using that. Press yes or accept any confirmations that pop up on your Android device's screen, otherwise this will not work. To start screen copy, simply type it in the terminal and the window will pop up. There are a lot more features in this program and I will be going over how to use them in the last section of the video, so click on the timestamp in the description to get there. Alright, before we get into the Linux section, I have a link to all my Linux tips and tutorials in the description, so if you want to see those, go check them out. All right, now it is time for Linux, my favorite category of operating systems. So I'm using a laptop with Ubuntu Linux installed on it, and here's my Ubuntu desktop, and this is the terminal, so I'm not going to go over how to install it on distributions that don't support snap packages, because that's how we're going to do it today. We're going to be installing the uh, screen copy snap package. So I know that there's an apt package for it, but the snap version has the latest version, and the apt package was clearly not updated, and the reason we needed the latest version is because the old versions don't support Android 12, and Android 12 is the newest version at the time of recording this video. So let's type sudo snap install screen copy, and after we enter our password and install it, we're done. As you can see, I already have it installed on my system, but you'll just have to wait for that on yours. If you haven't enabled USB debugging on the Android device yet, it is now time to do it, since it'll not work if you don't have it enabled. So now, you have to plug in your Android device using a USB cable. Press yes or accept any confirmations that pop up on your Android device's screen. If you don't, it will not work. To start screen copy, simply type it in the terminal and the window will pop up. There are a lot more features in screen copy and I'll be going over how to use them in the next section, so keep watching. Alright everyone, before we get to the next section, I would like to say that I have a full tutorial just like this video on my website as an article if you want to read that as well. So click the link in the description for that. Alright everyone, this is the section where I show you how to actually use the screen copy program. So I have two terminal windows open for you. This is the one where I'll be working in and this is the one that will display the help message. So if you ever want to see the available commands, just type screen copy and then dash dash help. And this shows the help message, the very long help message, for all of the options for the program. And if you have no command line experience whatsoever, what all these flags mean is, for example, this one up here always on top. When you type screen copy, right, this is, this is what you type to launch the program. But if you want to use one of these options, you simply just put a space and then do dash dash always on top, which is this one, or whatever flag you're trying to do. So the first one here, always on top, makes the window always on top above other windows. You know, when you have a window on top of another window and you press on it, it lowers and the other one goes to the front. Well, that just disables that for the screen copy window. So when we type that, here we have it. And when I go to a different window, it stays there. Unlock it and everything. And then we can, this is in the notes app, so I can just type stuff on the keyboard. And there, yeah, so, and then if you ever want to cancel it, either X out of the window or type control C into the here. There's a lot of advanced stuff that you're probably not going to want to use, but if you do, then you probably know how to use it anyway. For example, bitrate. I mean, I never find myself using it, but some of you may have a reason to use it. You just do dash dash bitrate equals, and then the values. And then we've got cropping. We have select the USB. Uh, this is a useful one for some of you, disable the screensaver. So if the phone is on during the screen copy program and it just turns off and goes to the screensaver, you can disable that by doing dash dash screensaver. And you can pair these with a lot of them. So you can do dash dash disable screensaver and dash dash always on top if you want to have multiple of them. So it's not like you can only have one. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. You can have as many as you want. Full screen, that's a good one too. Of course, when you do it anyway, when you enter it anyway, you can always just do Command F or Control F and does it in full screen. But if you wanted it to start in full screen, then you could do that as well by just doing dash F or dash dash full screen. So enter that and it starts in full screen. So that's useful to get out of it. Just do Command F or Control F depending on your operating system and click the X when you're done. Help this just prints this message. 
paste. This is a good one. So right now, I'm not actually sure. I'm gonna copy just something random here. So I'm just gonna do lock video, control C, and then, so yeah, you can't you can't do command V or control V into this. So if you wanted to do that, I personally always have this on when I use it, and just in case I ever need it, I can do screen copy and then dash dash legacy, dash paste. So now, when I'm in here, I can do Command V, because I'm on a Mac, or Control V, you know, I'm not going to keep saying that every time. Um, it types it. kind of cool how it types it out, because it's going from another device to another device. So, obviously, Screen Copy has its own ways of inserting the text in there, but whatever. This just locks the orientation so that you don't rotate your phone. Max FPS. This one it does the virtual mouse. I know Android actually has a mouse if you plug in a mouse to the device. So, if you did uh, Screen Copy and then a capital H. Whoops. Why is it not? Oh, it's M. I saw that incorrectly. Uh, M. Now we've got this mouse inside here. I'm not sure if this is actually the Android mouse or if this is a mouse created by screen copy, but either way, it is a working mouse that actually does a lot more than the normal mouse because you can actually like highlight text and things like that, which I don't think I was able to do before. Uh, next we have max size. You can choose the size of your window. This is a good one if you only want to mirror the display and not be able to control it from your computer with your cursor. You can do screen copy and then dash N. So now you can't interact with it here, it's just a display. No display, this is a very useful feature, but uh, it only works if you're recording. So the way to record, it'll show it down there eventually. Um, you'll do screen copy and then dash R and then the file name, so myfile.mp4, right? So that records it and it shows the display so you can actually do things on there. But if you have no display, capital N, you can do dash capital N, click enter, and this will not, so it'll make it so that it's still recording your screen and you can still do stuff on your actual phone, but you're not gonna see the screen on your actual computer, which is pretty useful. So right now it's recording and you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything on my computer, but once I quit this, there's my video right here. And this is just what I was doing on my phone during it. I just pulled on the notification shade. That's pretty much it. A lot of good stuff in here that you can figure most of it out since I showed you. Here's the record. So with dash R, so by the way, with any of these, you notice how I did dash R and then space, right? Well, if I did dash dash record, and then I, if I did that, I'd have to do equals. So when it's a dash dash, you always have to do an equal sign. If you don't, if it's just a dash one letter or two letters like that, dash R, you just do a space. So it's, it's the same thing. And I'll show you recording right now. Record, it's recording something, All right? This is what's gonna be in my recording. And then I close this and it saves the file. So now I can get to that file. So here's the file I just did. That's what was on my screen. I was just swiping around. Start the FPS counter. Uh, that just prints the FPS down in here. This is a good one. Uh, dash T, so dash T, show touches. When I open it, now it, when I'm actually on the phone, not when I use the cursor, uh, it shows the touch where my finger is. That will be very useful if you're recording a tutorial on your phone and they want to see what you are actually doing on there. Uh, you can see the version of screen copy, which is pretty useful. So screen copy and then dash dash version. It shows that I'm using 1.24, which is currently the latest version. Stay awake. This keeps the device awake, which is very, very good. Because a lot of times when I'm in screen copy, the device turns off and it goes black if I haven't touched it in a while. And here is our shortcuts, which is very important. Mod, this just means control or command. So control F, switch, switch to full screen, rotate. These are the rotates, resizing, turn device off, mod O. You can just do the help message to see all of these whenever you'd like. This is another feature that I talked about in the beginning, drag and drop an APK file. Uh, it installs the APK, so if you drop an APK into your phone, it installs it. But if you drop a non-APK file, you just get to keep that file on your device. So if you want to quickly transfer a file, that is useful too. So that's pretty much it for the features of screen copy. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and I will see you next time.